Hello everybody, this is from Milwaukee to Nashville covering everything Admirals, Pirates, and Florida Everblades related. Um, we are brought to you by the wonderful folks at Hockey Locker, 2002 West Howard Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. You can call them at 414-800-7585 or visit HockeyLockerMilwaukee.com. Um, you can get all your hockey needs, uh, referee needs, figure skating needs, uh, hockey apparel. Uh, you can get Admirals jerseys, Pirates jerseys, Wild jerseys, Blackhawks jerseys, Red Wings jerseys, Old Capitals jerseys. You can get You can get retro jerseys, what he's trying to get. They're right. blank, so don't expect to look for like certain players. They are blanks. So you'd have to get them customized. Uh, FYI. All right. So today we played another Illinois team uh, that may no. be on the move. That may be on the move. That's not confirmed, but there's a lot of rumblings. Yeah, we've been hearing stuff all week about yeah, the Vegas wall. wants a the Vegas wants a minor league team in Nevada, so they're thinking moving. A, they're thinking about buying a team and putting it in Reno. Uh, so logistics wise, I'd say they should probably buy the Wolves and just bring them out to Reno. Yeah, because maybe they're getting tired of transporting people from the Midwest to them all the time. That does cost way more than going from here to Nashville. Yeah, and that's the, also that you could use like Midwest Airlines, yeah. which they just brought back, which has like a sixty dollar flight to from here to Nashville, and it's in a, like under an hour. Yeah, so it benefits the Predators in Milwaukee, but as far as Vegas, Chicago goes, it would probably. Make I mean, I know there's sense. direct flights, but it's still what two hours airtime. Uh, hour and a half, give or take. Yeah, so. I mean, it's not like they're taking your Greyhound or anything. Yeah, but still, <laughs> they want to move, uh, they want to have an AHL team in Reno. So, uh, yeah. And, uh, and uh, logistically speaking, if they say brought the, bought, and, and I guess I should remove this from people's mindset. If Vegas bought Rockford, okay? Rockford owns this, Rockford City owns part of the team. So not only do you have to pay the owner, but you've got to pay the city and the arena owners own a part of the team. Not to mention the Wolves are the minor league affiliate of the Golden Knights. Why would they want to take the Blackhawks affiliates? The Blackhawks would then buy the Wolves, but the Wolves won't sell to the Blackhawks due to um, So, yeah, the Wolves the are two. basically up in the air whether they're going to be purchased by Vegas or they're going to lose their affiliate. Warner. Again, their fifth affiliate in, I think, two decades. Maybe the owner of the, Black, maybe the, owner of the Wolves should just sell the team because apparently no NHL team wants to put up with his ass. Um, I, from what I got, uh, the general manager of the Wolves said that their number one goal is to always win a Calder Cup. I'm going to tell you right now, we are AHL fans. What's the number one goal of an AHL team? To help the Predators or to help your NHL affiliate because you're a minor league development. developmental territory? It's development. It's always development. You can't hire, uh, you know, end-of-the-road NHLers and go, oh, well, we're going to play them over your prospects every night and go, we're not going to develop for you. That just doesn't work. Yeah. That's why you lost... Uh, Winnipeg, that's why you lost St. Louis, and that's why you lost um, uh, Atlanta. They had Vancouver at one point. Yeah, they also had Vancouver at one point, and it only lasted a year. Yeah, so maybe it's the uh, owner of the Wolves that needs to go. All right, so the Admirals did play the Wolves. Uh, stats Can we make fun of the Wolves more? Yes, uh, we, we will, because the score is kind of... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I say we should probably dive into that, like... Because there's no point in Rockford being purchased because they have a perfectly good setup with the Blackhawks. And and, uh, and Rockford, they know their role. Rockford knows that they're a developmental system for the Blackhawks. They know their role. Apparently, the idiot owner of the Chicago Wolves, he don't know his role. Yeah, and, and, and that uh, the Admirals, when we look at Nashville right now... I've watched I, half that team play. Yeah, we've watched o over half. Over oh, you half. watched over half. I haven't been a season ticket holder for the Admirals that long. Okay, so I've seen over half that team. Everyone but Duchesne, uh, Granlund, and... Duchesne, Granlund, and everybody else you watched. Yannick Weber. That's oh. it. I've Everybody else I've seen in a minor league system somewhere. Yeah, and I've technically been watching Granlin his whole career because of my uh, alternate, my uh, Minnesota being my side team. 
And uh, so, like, yeah, uh, like so, I'm just yeah, saying, yeah. you know, um, and with, with that being said, Iowa even knows their role. When they have guys and they go up, they don't get mad. The fans don't get mad. We yeah. know our plays. Do we... Okay, we lost Trenton, who all of us in Milwaukee love Trenton. Yeah, all of us loved Rocco Grimaldi, and we knew our role. He got caught up. In, uh, he, he delivered. Tenorti, he got called up. We never saw it coming that he'd do what yeah, he's he doing, but, but he's doing great. Our job is to make sure that we produce solid NHLers. Yeah. And guess what? That's what we do time after time after time after time. And if, Wolves' ownership just doesn't get the message. I mean, this is why Vegas had to sit there and go get free agents and trade because the Wolves are not developing. Well, how come Chicago's not getting better because Rockford's clearly getting better? Rockford? Rockford's getting better, but yet the Blackhawks don't seem to be getting better. I think it takes time for a development team when you're rebuilding to develop those players. Some take long. Chicago's eye. Yeah. That's one of the parts like, okay, let's look at Tolvanen, okay? Yeah. Tolvanen's been here. He was supposed to be this hot thing. We thought he was going to be here for a cup of coffee. And he came here. He didn't, uh, he didn't play up to the standards. He's just now catching fire. Yeah, but this is his second year, though. And, but, yes, but normally your first year you light it up, second year sophomore slow. Yeah. That's how that goes. But now he's catching on, so he's like the reverse. The only reason I keep bringing up the Rockford thing is because I think Dylan and Tyler Sakura, they deserve a shot in Chicago to be like Chicago's answer. Uh, I was Sadiq also going to say Lankinen as well. Lankinen yeah. over Crawford. I would I would definitely take that every day. Yeah, because I'm thinking uh, the Sakura brothers in Rockford could be Chicago's answer to the Sedin brothers that, Van- that Vancouver had. Because uh, Tyler and Dylan Sakura are really good players if you've had the privilege to watch them like we have. We're Admiral fans, and even we acknowledge good players when we see them. Yes. Like this, uh, what, uh, Elvin is. Yeah. He's a really good player, too. Uh, Patrick Brown as well, and Dylan Cogwood. Yeah. Uh, all good hockey players. Time again. We're not fans of their team, but we acknowledge good players when we see them. Yeah. Hell, even Time Again shows flashes of good. But Time Again also has had NHL time, and yeah. I think he's on the uh, back end of his career. Yeah, but anyways, if that happens, I'd say the Wolves would logically be relocated. Chicago, you may be a large market, but dude, large markets should not be getting everything. Okay, you don't need everything. You have two baseball teams, and they both suck. All right. Each baseball team in Chicago has only won one World Series in my lifetime. All right, and so, it sucked most of it. All right, so tomorrow, or well, right now, we, like I said, the wait, Admirals. Wait, 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 we haven't even talked about this game. Don't talk about the Rockford game tomorrow until after we talk about tonight's beating. All right, so let's talk about tonight's beating, and you can get into the stats. All right, the shots on go are even, 32 apiece for the game. Uh, this has to be a typo, but Milwaukee was three for three on the power play tonight. No, I call stick taps today, because when was the last time Milwaukee was three for three on the power play? And then uh, Chicago was one for three. Uh, both teams had eight penalties for a total of 25 penalty minutes. So yeah, there was a lot of penalties, but yeah, each team had uh, eight for 25 minutes. And uh, yeah, it was 7-3 regulation victory for the good guys, us. All right, so let's get into the scoring. Have at it. All right, so scoring in the first five minutes and three second, 36 seconds in was Freddie Gaudreau with his ninth, with an assist from Tanner Janot, his tenth, and Steven Santini, his ninth. Then Daniel Carr scored his 18th with an assist from Tommy Novak, his 18th, and Troy Grosnick, his first. Um, then Time Again got his 11th with an assist from Ty- Dylan Coughlin, his 11th, and... Right, Patrick Brown, right. his 10th. All right. Then we get into Tommy Novak scored his 8th with an assist for Cole Schneider, his 21st, and Daniel Carr, his 18th. Jeez, there was a lot of goals scored in the second period. Um, then Cole Schneider scored his 11th on the power play with an assist from Daniel Carr, his 21st, and Frederick Gaudreau, his 10th. Then Brandon Peary scored on the power play with an assist his 11th with an assist from Coughlin, his 12th, and Curtis McKenzie, his 17th. Then Illy Tolvin in like, I think it was like 12 or 8 seconds later, 
scored his 11th with an assist from Frederick Allard. Then Lucas Alvinus scored in the second with his 9th with an assist from Ty McGinn, his 7th, and Keegan Colasar. Colasar was hurt during a fight with He Terry. got knocked out one punch. He was more than just hurt. They had to help his ass off the ice, dude. One punch, bam, hit the ice. Yeah, um, and then uh, Cole Schneider scored his 12th with an assist from Frederick Gaudreau, his 11th, and Alexander Carrier, his 25th. That was on the power play. Wait, did I swear I can't remember if it is? Yes. The F word or S word? Uh, you said eh, um, um, but. But the other the A word. Four. Yes. But you we'll can say get. ass, they didn't swear word. Oh, well, we'll see. <laughs> All, right. All right, we'll see if we get yelled at. All right, uh, Freddie Gaudreau scored his 10th with an assist from Cole Schneider, his 22nd, and Daniel Carr, his 22nd, on the power play. That was also Daniel Carr's 100th career assist. That was also Gaudreau's second uh, goal of the game. Also, um, tonight, for future rest. And Cole Schneider had two goals. So that's good. Um, also, um, before we can put the hockey sticks away, I did want to touch on something in the NHL. Uh, Alexander Ovechkin packed Mark Messier on the all-time goals list. Way to go, Grady. Um, also want to give a tip of the hat, not really stick taps, but a tip of the hat to uh, John Gibson, who plays for the Anaheim Ducks, who made a mask to honor Kobe Bryant and all of the victims in that tragedy. Wow, Goudreau and Schneider both had two goals tonight. All right, so three stars of the game were Daniel Carr was the third star with uh, one goal and like two or six. One, one uh, goal and two assists for uh, Carr. Yeah, uh, one goal and three assists. Three assists. Where did he get three? Uh, power play goal. Uh, um, he oh, had, there goes three. Never mind. Yeah, I yeah. found it. I found it. He assisted on Schneider's. All right. First. Um. So and then uh, Freddie Gaudreau, two goals, two assists, and Cole Schneider in his return from injury, two goals, two assists. Um. In yes. net was uh, Garrett Sparks for the Wolves. He stopped twenty-five of thirty-two. Uh, Troy Grosnick stopped twenty-nine of thirty-two. Yeah. Um. Also had an assist. Uh. Head coach for the Wolves is Rocky Thompson. Assistant coach is Chris Dennis. And I love that assistant name, man, Rocky Thompson. Assistant coach Bob Nardella. Uh, head coach for Milwaukee is Carl Taylor. Assistant coach Scott Ford. Assistant coach Greg Rollo. Attendance at the All-State Arena was 5,502. You wouldn't know by the way it looked on uh, TV. Um, referees were Chris, Oda or Chris O'Donnell. Connor O'Donnell. Well, and Chris O'Donnell. Ain't that uh, the guy that played Robin? And uh, the guy that played on NCIS LA. Huh? Um, uh, and then my least favorite AHL referee, Sean Davis. Um, and then we have uh, linesman James Grenier and Jonathan Sedlak. Uh, the Admirals are now 6-1-1-1 one, one, and one against the Wolves. Um, the Admirals are currently now riding a four-game win streak. Um, the What's Wolves, our record against the Wolves now? 6-1-1-1. One, one, and one. Mm -hmm. All right, we ready to talk about uh, uh, what you call it, uh, that other thing tomorrow? Yeah, uh, Rockford. Yeah, yeah, those uh, ice uh, pigs that we like to barbecue. All right, currently the Admirals are six zero one and zero against Rockford because you know we own Rockford. Uh, the last meeting was on December 7th, uh, last Saturday. Oh, no, no, that was the first meeting. Oh, whoops. Uh, January 25th, that was last Saturday. Hey, either way, it was, the outcome was the same. 5-2 Admiral victory. See? Uh, yeah, we, uh, owned the Ice Hogs. Uh, Rockford's leading scorers, like I was saying, Tyler Sakura, 12 goals, 16 assists for 28 points. Brandon Hagel, uh, 15 goals, 8 assists, 23 points. Dylan Sakura, 11 in the 11th for a total of 22 points. Uh, Mackenzie Entwistle, 9 goals, 10 assists for 19 points. And then Jacob Nielsen, 6 goals for 12 assists, 18 points. Um, 
Currently, Rockford, uh, they lost tonight, so they are one, they are what, one, one in five in their last six. Oh, yeah, because they lost one tonight. in four in their last five. One and four. I said one and five and they're by a six because they lost tonight. Okay. I'm including tonight, dude. Okay. Okay. Because remember, uh, we played them tonight, not them. So, yeah. I know what I'm doing. I All right. All right, do the goalie. Uh, for Rockford, goaltenders are... Uh, oh, wait. Let me go check. check oh, Rockford's 2-7-1-0 in their last nice ten. Just to give you an idea of where they are currently stand, and they are currently 0-4, 0-0. Oh, oh. Now they're 0-5, oh, 0-0, oh, because oh, like I said, they lost tonight. Um, I am checking transactions because goaltenders, uh, they did add Adam Conklin. Uh, that was just done, like, that. actually, that's a prerequisite for tomorrow. He is being recalled for the from the Indy Fuel. Okay. Uh, they play in, uh, they are the ECHL team to the flat. Yeah, Rockford, uh, their home record is 12-11-0-0. And, oh. and uh, that's kind of weird because uh, didn't we beat them in an overtime or a shootout this year in Rockford? So how come it's not being listed under their home record? 12-11-0-0. If they were losing an overtime or a shootout, that should be a one or a one. Um, I, mean, I think we beat them in overtime at our home. Yeah, maybe, but either way, they're 12-11-0-0, oh, so they're, they're not that good at home. But um, so they, they jump most the recently, the they most recently lost Dennis Gilbert to recall from Chicago, who is kind of their big, strong, tough defenseman. Yeah. Um, their goaltenders, they are running three right now. It is uh, their... Their split squad between Colin Delia and Kevin Lankinen, they both have 19 games played. Uh, Delia has a 2.91 goals against average and an 8 wins, 9 losses, and 1 overtime loss with same percentage of .906. Ouch. No, you continue that. I got two things I'm going to throw as soon as you're done. Also, uh, Lankinen has 19 games played. He has 7-10 and two with a 3.19 goals against average and a .904 save percentage. And then we have Matt Tompkins, nine games played, five wins, four losses with a 2.45 goals against average and a .916 save percentage. Um, that's all I have for them. All right, uh, their power play at home, they are 12 for 97 at home. Uh, penalty kill at home, they're 17 for 90. Just to give you an idea of where they are in the power play, um, they've given up 135 goals this season, and they've only scored 109. Compared to Milwaukee's 146 scored and 99 against. That is great. Even after tonight, we've only given up less than 100 goals this season. Yeah, if that don't make us the best team in the league, I don't know what does. Uh, um, also, also the Admirals, the Admirals have officially worked their way into 70 points, people. First team to 70 points, uh, probably by end of February if they keep going at the pace they're going. Um, Was tonight their 31st victory or 32nd? 32nd. So they are currently thir they're currently 32, 8, 4, 2, and Rockford 20, 24, 1, 1. Yes. You know, give you uh, 2023 one and one or 2023 one and two. Oh, yeah, they, lost the they lost the shootout. All right, well, whatever. Anyways, let's move on to tomorrow's Predator game against Vegas. Okay. Seeing how we're done talking about Rockford. All right, uh, currently the season series between the two teams sits at one game apiece. Uh, the last game was a uh, Vegas. 4-3 overtime victory on November 27th in Nashville. Um, yeah, Vegas' top scoring players are... Well, I just completely botched it. No, it's... Yeah, uh, screw it. Old school way. <laughs> yeah. 
Oh, All right, cool. Ve- Vegas is top five point getters. Uh, Max Pacioretty, 52 games played, 21 goals, 26 assists. Uh, Mark Stone, 52 games played, 18 goals, 28 assists. Uh, Riley Smith, 52 games played, 20 goals, 19 assists. William Carlson, 49 games played, 10 goals, 24 assists. And Jonathan Marshall, uh, 47 games played, 16 goals, and uh, oh, seven, 16 goals, 17 assists. I'll quick do what I'm about to do real fast. Uh, do the goalies while I pull this up. All right, so the goaltender, starting goaltender is Mark Andre Fleury. He had to sit out tonight's game uh, due to uh, uh, him not playing in the All Star game. He has 35 games or 36 game played, 35 starts, 19 wins, 12 losses, and four overtime losses, with a 2.86 goals against average and a .907 save percentage. Then we have Malcolm Subban, who is 17 games played, 17 starts. Uh, seven wins, seven losses, and three overtime losses. With a .897 save percentage and a 3.04 goals against average. Um, today, the uh, uh, Vegas Knights beat the Carolina Hurricanes 4-3. Uh, to three. Um, So... With right. that being said, if Oscar Dansk is, does stay there, he has one game played, one start. He has a 8.38 save percentage and a 6.00 goals against average. All right. In their last five, uh, Vegas is a uh, fr- uh, uh, first line forwards, uh, left or uh, right winger, Riley Smith. He has uh, three goals and assists. And then uh, their center, Paul Statsny, uh, two goals and three assists. Marsha Shaw, he only has a goal in his last five. Uh, Max Pastoretti, he has two goals and an assist in his last five. Other than that, the third line or fourth line really hasn't done anything. I want to worry about him. Uh, their defenders... There is really nothing there as far as the defensive pairings. Vegas is not doing that good. They're like barely in a playoff position right now. Um, I really, I mean, on defense, I guess uh, Shea Theodore, six goals, 20 assists. You know, keep a lookout for him. Uh, Mitch Schmidt, uh, four goals, 14 assists. Other than that, there's really not... Just stop their front two lines, essentially. Because look at this front, front line. You got Marshall, Stanchney, and Riley. You got a 15 goal score, a 12 goal score, and a 17 goal score. That's all your front line. So if you get, if you can uh, work your way through that front line, you should have a shot at winning. Okay. Um, I mean, Vegas is in the playoffs, but not by much. Okay. They're up by they're up by uh, three on the Predators. The Predators currently sit in the third wild card spot, one out of the wild card. Yeah. They're uh, three points out of the wild card with three games in hand and the teams in front of them. Um, they still have a game in hand against Chicago, who's behind them, and two games in hand against Winnipeg, who are behind them. Um, they have uh, a game in hand against Dallas. Who are uh, have 60 points and two games in hand against St. Louis, who have 70 points. Um, outside of that, right now I'm just gunning for a wild card spot and get you as many points as you can until the end of the playoffs or until the start of the playoffs. If you can pull off a point per game, basically you should be able to make it from here. Um, the Priors currently are riding a two-game win streak. They are five, four, and one again in, in their last ten. Uh, Vegas is four, five, and one in their last ten. So it's a even swap on uh, on the um, game, wins losses for Vegas and Nashville. Uh, we'll see how this goes tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow we will have a late video. This video will be going up as soon as we are done. Yeah, we're going to rock for tomorrow. So yep. Uh, we will see you guys tomorrow. Um, don't you get, forget to check out our friends over at Hockey Locker, 2002 West Howard Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Do we do it again?
I'll tell you later. Keep going. Um, also, go over to YouTube. Don't yeah, forget we to. Yeah, to do it in the beginning, and now nobody's watching. But yeah, subscribe to us on YouTube and click that little bell. So that way you get notified every time we're live. The link is on our Facebook page. Go over there and subscribe. I will be pinning that tonight. And watch our videos for the whole length of the video. If, if at worst, 60 seconds. 60 yeah. seconds goes a long way. Give us a minute. A minute of your time will go a long way. Facebook people, you do the same. Yes. Yeah, we're watching you. No, so uh, um, we are from Milwaukee to Nashville. Thank you yet again in our video uh, for the second night in a row. Thank you to our 1,000 follows on Facebook. You guys are greatly appreciated. Yeah, people like that we're doing this, but you're not watching us. So, see ya. Later, guys.